On this video, I'm going to record how I installed the polyurethane suspension on my 2010 Dodge Charger. When I went looking on the internet to try and vi find a video on how they've done this, I couldn't find anybody that made a video of this specific installation on this particular car with the polyurethane. So I figured I'd make a video on how I did it. Uh, right there is the uh, rear lower control arm, and I've already burned out the bushing and installed the new polyurethane bushing on that and I'm going to repeat that process on the video on that which is the uh, front radius arm and uh, then I'll be installing the bushings not on this I'm going to install a, a brand new ball joint upper ball joint which comes on that assembly right there so uh, I'm not going to reuse this assembly and I'm not going to show you how to do the bushings on this assembly but I will show you when I get the new ones they're on order and I'm waiting for them so uh, I've already burned the bear the bushing out of this uh, tension strut or tension rod and uh, so I'm going to show you how to uh, how I install the bearing the new bushing uh, that comes now I got my uh, bushings from Prothane but there's a lot of companies that make the bushing kits for this car. I bought the entire suspension kit so I have a whole lot of bushings to replace on this car. The first thing you notice when you uh, get the bushing, which is right here, is when you go to put it in the uh, sleeve, uh, they don't exactly fit easily. And there's a, there's a flat side here and you can try and push that in but it doesn't just go in easily. And if you turn it over on this side uh, if you take a look in there, that's a fairly sharp edge and it's actually a fair bit smaller than the bushing itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a hammer and just kind of enlarge this a little bit just so that it's flared out just a little bit so you can get the bushing in there. So I'm going to go do that. You don't need to watch me beat on that with a hammer. But uh, then I'll show you how easy it is to get them in once you give yourself a little bit of a flare on the edge there. We had to make a little adjustment here. The, uh, this flange, or this, uh, this, this uh, bushing piece from the original uh, right here, has this lip on it. And uh, I don't know if you can see that real well. Anyhow, that lip was actually quite a bit bigger, and it was causing the uh, the bushing to pop back off. It was the bushing was was acting like a rubber band and squeezing out, and then it would slip back off. So I had to grind that down a little bit. So I'm going to have to start over with the sliding things together. So I'm going to I'm going to do it again. Alright, this is how I had to get this one put together. First, I started with this uh, bushing right here. I had to grind down the uh, flange on the outside of the metal uh, piece so that this one would go over the top of it. Then I had to start this piece onto the other side uh, because I couldn't get them to squeeze together. Then I had to start this into the uh, into this bushing before I seated this one completely and now I'm just going to squeeze them together and I'm going to show you what it looks like after I'm done. One of the things about this Prothane kit that I got for this suspension is that uh, it comes with these uh, bushings for the uh, control arms, but this spot right here for the uh, shocker, the, the, the strut, whatever folks call it, uh, it doesn't come with that bushing. So I had to order a, another bushing, and I got uh, this bushing from a company called White Line, and that uh, bushing goes right in that hole and it's a polyurethane bushing and takes up all the slop for the uh, shock or, or strut but 
in order to put that bushing in you've got to take this collar out this metal sleeve the thing is this is the only place where you take the metal sleeve out because you use the metal sleeve on this end you leave that sleeve in there for pushing these bearings in and uh, I burned both of the uh, rubbers out of both of these at the same time but now I have to take this sleeve out which I will do with a hacksaw All right, I finished uh, pressing that bushing in, and uh, this is my witness mark, and as you can see, uh, it's just about right. It's about halfway in between, so that makes it easy to know how far in to push that. One question uh, that I saw on the internet was whether or not you could remove this ball joint while the knuckle the steering knuckle was still on the car and I believe the answer is yes if you have the right tools which I do so I'm gonna I'm gonna remove that uh, I'm gonna remove this ball joint and replace it I thought I would show you the difference between the uh, factory con upper control arm and uh, this Moog aftermarket control arm as far as the uh, stoutness of the uh, of the Moog arm. This is actually a, a step up. Uh, it's not the factory replacement. They do offer a, a lighter duty unit than this one. But I decided since my son and I are probably going to race this car a little bit to put in the heavier duty unit which I understand you can um, replace those ball joints if you need to on this arm it is substantially heavier uh, than this factory unit I didn't bother showing you how to replace those rubber bushings because they press in just like all the others and so I'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, replace this uh, factory unit with this Moog unit and this is greasable um, it's an all-around better unit for uh, high performance use so there is the upper control arm installed in the uh, position and on this passenger side the nut to get at that is all the way around back behind here and I was able to get at it with a ratcheting wrench right there but there's no way you're ever going to get at that with a torque wrench so don't try you're wasting your time in order to get all that get at it you have to remove this vacuum piece and uh, 
an electrical connector, which is up here out of the way now, that sits right here. So there is some stuff you have to remove to get at that nut in order to get it out and also to get it back together. It's not real bad, but you're never going to get a torque wrench on it, so don't bother trying. All right, so all of the uh, bushings are installed. And it's a little dark in there. Um, but you can see the red, that's the new bushings. The one thing that I will also uh, share with you is under here. I'm going to try and get a picture of it. That ball joint right there, this ball joint, there's a grease zerk on these uh, Moog ball joints and they give you a 90 degree grease zerk. Don't use that because if you do you'll break it off, you'll have to uh, drill it out and it sticks down farther. So get one of these. There's no good reason to have a 90 degree zerk on there. Um, th these are smaller, they tuck up out of the way and you can put as much grease on them as you need. Uh, you just have to pull the wheels off to grease. Well, that's no big deal, so don't use those other ones. So that's the whole suspension installed on the front.